Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'll, I'll go ahead and get started. My name is Dan. This is Daily Art Adventure number 700 and... <laughs> Come on, give me, some, give, me, give, give me some slack. It's been at least two minutes since I wrote that down. Daily Art Adventure number 717. <laughs> and uh, what I'm really anxious to get to this afternoon is to finish or at least make good progress on this painting. But I have a couple odds and ends, and I thought it, it'd probably be informative for you to, to bring, uh, informative to bring you in on uh, this, these two paintings that I'm gonna do modifications. They're both sort of late, late stage adjustments. So I thought I was done with this painting. In fact, I have already photographed it. Hello, Heather, good to have you here. Hello, Uncle Sixty, workaholic. <laughs> he calls me. Are you talking about yourself, Uncle? No. Hey, by the way, I am sorry. We didn't get a chance to stop and say hi. It's real simple. We got up Monday morning um, after an okay night's sleep, and we had to catch a ferry. <laughs> we looked at our clock. It's like, dang, we got to be in Cape May at 2 o'clock. So we was... <laughs> <laughs> I waved at you when I went by. Now, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. My friend, Uncle, a.k.a. Horatio, lives in New Jersey, and we, my wife and I had a delightful time. All right, back to this painting. Uh, this painting I thought was all done. It's signed, but I took it to my painter's group a week ago, last Tuesday, and they liked it, but they had a... A couple, first of all, they had a number of bad suggestions, <laughs> in my opinion. I, this is a very unusual painting. And what's unusual about it is all the energy is up here. This, almost this entire bottom half of the painting, and the fact that it's a half, that's very unusual. Um, because these, these blue umbrellas bisect it almost perfectly in half, which again, normally is a problem. I am consciously pushing the boundaries on this composition, okay? But the bottom half of the painting, the whole thing could be considered a rest area, a rest zone. Busy, not busy. When you look up close, of course, you can see all kinds of things happening down here. But at first glance, you don't look there because your attention is captured by the top. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> forgive me, these are good friends of mine, but most of the advice that I got was like, oh, put more light down here. And I'm just not going to do it. I, th I think they're wrong. I might, I might be wrong. But to me, the charm of this painting is precisely what I said. High energy, low energy. Um, but I got three of the many comments. I got three that I agreed with. One, the simplest one was all four umbrellas are the same color. And if I could push these back a little bit by darkening them, that's a great idea. So I'm going to push those back. The other suggestion that is a good one is make more of this of these lights glowing. Good idea. I'm going to do that. And then the, the third idea, which they didn't have exactly, but I've extrapolated out of what they said, is if I just put one spot of light down here. And I, somebody smoking a cigarette. <laughs> More realistically, people on their cell phones, that would be bits of light. In fact, this woman right here, she's either about to drink something or she's texting on her phone, one or the other. But I don't want to do text on phone. So here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to put a candle on one of these tables. But if there's a candle on one, why isn't there a candle on two? See, I'm in a, I'm in a pickle then. I'm going to put a candle on this table and maybe a smaller, you know, a, make less of it on this table. All right, but let's do the easy stuff first, which is let's uh, darken the distant umbrellas. Now, by doing this, we are really not um, striving for realism per se. This is, this is a visual trick. This is not uh, uh, an indication of what I actually saw. When you're there in person and you look at all four of these umbrellas, trust me, they are all essentially the same color to your eye. Does that make sense? 
So once again, as, as painters, I just picked up a little tiny bit of raw umber, by the way, so that I could tone that down a little bit. So what we're doing now is not realism. It's, it's painterism. <laughs> by the way, if any of you missed yesterday's broadcast, I really enjoyed doing that, and I believe I'm going to go to all the work of editing it. I have a feeling it's the kind of broadcast, what I did yesterday, a, a, a lesson in real painting. It's, it's the kind of thing, in fact, for some art classes in the future, some of my art classes in the future, I might say required viewing. In fact, I might start a, a small list before you come to my class next week you must have watched these videos what do you think would that be mean all right i think that's good enough done done with that now the next thing that is pretty easy is make these lights up here <laughs> i like all you guys greeting each other that makes me smile So somebody somewhere last week in my painter's group suggested I make more of, of these glowing street lights. And I said, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'll, I can do that. Nope. More. More glow, more mess, more glow, more mess. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Then as I go toward the center of those, you know this drill. The closer then you get into the center, the more white you add to your mixture. In fact, I think that those are just large enough. They could handle a little slab of palette knife, palette knife color. <laughs> that will actually make them jump off the canvas and be a little bit brighter. Than, uh, than paint applied with a brush. All right, that's done. That was easy, wasn't it? Now let's do the. Let's do, go down to the tricky part. Down here at the bottom of the painting, where my friends kept. They wanted me to put more lights in the windows, more reflection on the. Whoops! I've got a little problem here. I am afraid that I am out of Indian yellow up here. Let's see if I can if I can make mix up a color comparable I'll stay stay at it. All right, I think that's good enough. So, candle. One major one and one minor one. That's all right. Add a bunch of titanium to that and a little bit of lemon yellow, Hansa yellow. I don't know what kind of yellow. I'll tell you in a second, though, since you asked. That is actually um, Graham bismuth yellow. I know it was some weird thing. Bismuth. I'm assuming that the pigment in bismuth yellow is <laughs> bismuth. I have no idea what bismuth is, but I suspect that it's yellow. Yeah. All right, nearly finished. My other painting that I'm going to touch up here in this broadcast, 
a little bit more involved. I really had to sleep on this, this down here. I really had to chew on that for a good while before I could decide whether I wanted to go with the, with the recommendation that I was given. I know, not, I, I know that's not true. I am not going with the recommendation. Again, many of them that said, oh, make it. They didn't all, by the way. I don't ignore everybody's company. <laughs> I mean, everybody's, I don't mean company. I don't ignore everybody's uh, counselor advice. I just felt like they, they, they were wanting me to turn it into, in a sense, an ordinary composition. And I just, just didn't want to do that. All right, so I added two very, very important but very small pricks of light down there. And ye yeah, okay. Now it's still it's all a rest area except <laughs> except those two points of light. All right. I'm gonna call that again done. I have to photograph this painting again. By the way, if you have not seen one of my videos, I think you can just do a search in my YouTube channel. I think you can just do a search for photographing paintings. I think I've actually done more than one broadcast. And if if you're someone who has to photograph your own paintings, then that it may be helpful to you. It involves a garage door. So if you don't have a garage, if you live in an apartment, sorry, it won't help you very much. But I've discovered a garage is a good way to photograph paintings. That's all I'm going to say about it right now. All right, but I am, however, going to raise up, bear with me, I'll be there in just a minute. I'm going from a, a large vertical painting to a much smaller um, horizontal painting. All right, now this is a painting I started um, last Wednesday. Today, here it is, Wednesday again. No, wait, what day is today? <laughs> Today's Thursday. My goodness, time flies when you're an artist. <laughs> Um, I started this painting Wednesday a week ago. And this was one of those paintings where I was pretty happy with it when I was downtown in the dark working on it. Came home, went to bed, you know. <laughs> Got up the next day. When I looked at it next, I went, oh, well, it, was, it was okay, but no, it's not. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't ring my bell terribly much. That happens sometimes. You all know, some of you are saying, it happens to me all the time. No, 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 don't say that. <laughs> Even if it's true, don't say it out loud. Don't admit it. <laughs> you need to progress as a painter is 10% correction, 90% encouragement. I'm talking about your inner talk, your inside, your mind, how do you talk to yourself as a, as a painter? How do you talk about your artwork? Well, frankly, and again, forgive me, but I know how most of you talk about your artwork because I hear you. When I judge shows, when I, when I attend my painter's group, oh, no, I don't know. I'm not very good. It's just I don't like this part. <laughs> anyway, stuff like that. It's mostly be just because you're a human being. Most of us are in need of more encouragement than slap down. Maybe I need some slapping down, but <laughs> don't worry. I get my share. All right. It, oh, my goodness, the two points of light. Thank you for letting me know. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, yes. Thank you. It was off camera. My goodness. Here it is. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I can't. I can't get there from here. <laughs> Hang on. Harder than one might think. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm glad you let me know. Who, who was that? It was Ed Barber. Sorry, or Susan. Uh, uh, uh. I can't. All right. There. Let me point you away a little bit. And my arms in the way. Hang on just a second. There. 
Okay, hang on. I'm going to try to zoom in for you just a little bit. Thank you for mentioning that again. <laughs> Uncle Picasso. Right? Thanks for asking. Again, there's the big picture, and there's the details. Right? Thank you for alerting me to that bad production quality again. <laughs> All right, so I was starting to say, or was saying, when I looked at this painting the next day, I was like, oh, I'm not, it wasn't as thrilled with it as I had hoped I would be. <laughs> but it's a real easy fix. Um, The drawing is good. That's a huge relief. Um, it's just a little too pale. The whole thing is too pale. All right, now I've taken the liberty of printing out a, a reference photo. So first of all, let me show you the, the reference, okay? <laughs> Uncle mess my business basement up, I understand. So there's the photograph, there's the painting. I'm going to leave this here just for the moment. And I'm sorry, let me show that to you again. <laughs> sorry. When I was down there, I ignored these leaves. The leaves weren't, the foliage wasn't pronounced like this until late in the evening when the sun was backlighting these leaves. And so I didn't even include them early on in the painting. Now, I regret that. And it's difficult using my painting technique, which as you know is layers, layer, 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 layer. It's hard to add something, but I'm, I am going to do that to this painting, partly so I can show you how I go about doing that. Now, why is it hard? The reason is because my painting technique is predicated, is all based on layers of transparent color. If I slap any color on top of this painting, it's going to look like an out of place, um, out of place postage stamp stuck on the painting. Because if I paint opaque on top of all this transparent, it just won't work. So it's not easy to add a big element to a painting like this, but it can be done, and that's what I want to show you. Now, be whoops, we seem to have some connectivity issues. Let's wait till we're going here again. Hang on, hang on, or maybe I've just lost my monitor. Let's let's double check. Still having trouble, but evidently I'm broadcasting, so I'm going to keep on. All right, uh, um, uh, David, I'm read your comment and I'm looking. It must be something in the camera angle because these are darn close to correct if they're not absolutely correct these lines the lower part of the, so anyway must be something in the in the angle that, that you're looking at all right so what i'm going to do quite simple oh and i'm still missing my indian yellow doggone it wouldn't have dreamt that that would be such a problem um i'm going to uh first of all do a glaze over the whole painting because the whole painting is dry so I have the liberty and I'm basically going to warm up everything that's in the sun and darken everything that's not in the sun right okay quite simple quite simple and of course do you, is the sky in the sun or not in the sun well the answer is yes both in and not in
Okay, Uncle 60. I'm reading here at the first, the first floor window, heads at the front left and left side should be the same levels. I'm sorry, man. I really must be missing it, you guys. I'm not seeing. No, the horizon is right there. All vanishing points are going. I'm sorry. If I'm missing it. I'm really missing it. Which, of course, is very possible. All right. So, I'm just about done glazing the warm stuff. I'll clean up those brushes later. Now let's now let's do some more glaze on the cool stuff, and then I'm going to show you how you have to, what you have to do to make changes on a Dan Nelson technique painting where everything is built up of layers and layers of transparent color. Now I'm not there yet, I'm still, I'm still just glazing. And um, the other night when I was painting, I made a conscious decision to give this, the wall of this building a little bit of a phthalo blue. It is blue. Blue, uh, you know, whatever kind of rock stone this is, marble. Um, it's brown marble in shade, so it has a bluish cast to it. But um, I'm now second guessing my phthalo decision and undoing it with some some violet and ultramarine. So I decided, and I don't mind there being a little bit of phthalo, but it was too much. So bear with me just for a few minutes. While I do a little bit of glaze over much of the painting. And then, and then, in a minute, I'm going to show you how you have to proceed to make, a, to add a major element in a painting if you're following my technique. <laughs> I'll warn you, you're not going to like it. <laughs> I mean, if you have to do it, you're not going to like it. The reason is... Well, I'll save that. Hang on. Just bear with me just for a minute. All right. I think that looks better. All right. I'll clean those brushes later, too. Now, let me take my photo reference. I hope I can't. I wish I could hang it up where you guys can see it. But I'm afraid that's not possible. Oh, good. You guys work out what my problems are come up with a consensus. <laughs> be, okay, before, before I take this up. Um, <laughs> <here. laughs> I love your conversation. All right, so here's what I want to add. I want to add this foliage backlit by the sun. And I will read, I'll read out. Well, let me take it. on the tops of the windows, heads. On the tops of the windows. Head. Okay, are, are you talking about here versus here? Uh, or here versus, oh, oh, are you saying here versus here? Did I finally catch on to what you're saying? It's like you have to go up, that is it, that is correct. We have a name for that in the business. I am with you, thank you guys. It's what we call a screw up. <laughs> it's a screw up. <laughs> All right. So which which side is which side do I like? All right. Good. Thank you. You finally got it through my thick skull. Um, Thinker eight eight eight. Um, yep. 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 Okay. Good. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Sorry to be so stupid, <laughs> but that's just me. All right, I, I'm, do I have to fix that before I, doggone it, I think I do. 
Oh, I, I was going to do the foliage and then make the corrections, but I don't think I can do that. So, all right. Wow. Where would I be without you? <laughs> all right. So, I'm going to do both, as you can imagine. This, this, not. This is playing a little bit dangerously, but I believe this is a, a late addition as well to the painting. And and uh, um, but I think I can do this uh, because it's just small enough. I can get away with uh, that. So that goes up. This comes down. these come down, I should say, this line comes down, and then I have to switch to opaque stuff now for a minute. Whew. Wow. For only yes. Yeah, I've not got the same. You're right. The same problem here. Heather, I think you're right. But I, if I, I'm, let me let me go ahead and make the change that I think I see you guys have indicated. those other brushes too quickly, didn't I? Too many cooks at the kitchen. <laughs> I'm beginning to feel that way, but I, I there's clearly I clearly um, made a mistake, and you guys definitely clearly helped me catch it. Uh, David, I will look at your comments. I'm sure there's something to it, but I'm not seeing it yet. Um, I will here when I'm broadcasting live. I I, I don't want to take too much time to read too slowly, too carefully, you know, because I want to keep going, keep painting, and not spend all my time with you guys. Uh, Seeing the back, my backside while I'm leaning, leaning over, reading your chat. So, <laughs> once again, even with all these changes, interesting mark is paramount over uh, accuracy per se. Although, of course, I want it to be accurate. Okay, we clean these brushes and switch to an opaque bluish color, dirty blue, to modify this side of the building. <laughs> uh, <laughs> G 
Jan, or is it Jan, trying to calm down the gang. <laughs> so, thank you. That's okay. We're, we're, we're making it. Okay, let me see now. Okay, so we raised up to match this, and now we have to raise up the bottoms of these windows. It's not the right color. Right value, I should say. It's really pretty close in color. Hello, Jan Schultz. Forgive me, I don't know if I can't tell by just looking if it's Jan or Jan. If you're an American, it's Jan. If you're German, it's Jan. Or uh, the two brush technique. Um, Jan asks about, or Jan asks about. Um, it's not two brushes is not the issue. Two hands is the issue. Painting with two hands, uh, I stumbled on it. Uh, I mean, nobody told me to do it. I just, it dawned on me about 10 or 12 years ago. Wait a minute. We should all be painting with two hands. Um, I've told that story many times. Um, I read that Leonardo da Vinci painted with two hands, and suddenly a light bulb came on in my head, and I said, wait a minute. Come on, you guys. Da Vinci painted with two hands. Why is nobody paying attention to this? And it took me quite a while to develop any kind of facility with my left hand, but, big but, my painting improved instantly, even though my left hand was outrageously incompetent, uh, my painting improved immediately as soon as I began using my second hand. There is a whole bunch of expert research on the subject now, not done by me, of course, but there's quite a bit of, if you just Google, you know, the power of the other hand or something like that, you'll find a lot of information about. I feel like um, it has to do with both sides of the brain being engaged. Um, oh, wait a minute. Let me make sure that I'm doing the yeah, those windows look like they line up now. Do you see? We had a problem. Now we think it's solved. Those two come together there, come together there. These windows here need to be lowered down. Yeah. Well, that actually isn't the window. That's a like a architectural detail frame over the window. Still, it needs to look this though. The window ends right there. I think this is okay down here. Let me darken this just a little bit. Now, everything I'm doing now is, I, I think, it's a fairly minor change. So I'm getting away with um, just painting it, either in dark, transparent, either transparent, dark, or opaque light. <laughs> I agree, Uncle 60. Um, I mean, I don't know if, I don't think you guys are talking about these windows way down here. I don't think that's what you're talking about. That's, sim that's simply a matter of my interesting marks getting in the way. <laughs> they might be too interesting, eh? That's just simply a matter of my interesting marks getting in the way of the drawing and looks confusing, which is, of course, not what you want to have happen either. All right, I'm going to declare myself done, at least for now. David, I will look at my pillar issue more carefully after I stop broadcasting. But now let's talk about how to um, add. <laughs> I'm trying to get my, my monitor to catch up here, folks. So once again, now that we've taken a long detour, how do I add this kind of light object in front of that? Well, it's real simple, but it's not fun because basically 
you need to do it in stages. In other words, I am not going to mix up a big pile of pale green paint or wood, yellow, whatever color you want to call that, and slap it on. That would look terrible. All right, I lost you for a minute. Let's see if we're back now. What I'm essentially going to do is paint white or off-white where I want this foliage to go. Now it's actually a pale yellow, but that's almost incidental. So this is just back to underpainting underpainting on top of <laughs> what was overpainting. Well, so what I'm doing is, again, slapping down a bunch of white or nearly white where I want to put green foliage. This has to dry for at least half a day. And in this case, it will be more than a day because I won't get back to this painting until tomorrow. At which time, I will do transparent green or yellow on top of this. This will be dry at that time. Does that make sense? This will be dry and I will do transparent color on top of this. And then what will I do? Then I'll do after that dries, I'll do some dark details. And anyway, I'm going to I'm I'm going all the way back to my um, to my acrylic technique, but I'm doing it in oils. So as you understand, it's going to be quite slow. Basically. I do one layer and then can't touch the painting until that dries, which in most cases will be the next day. So there you go. That's hope that you don't have to do it because it's a pain in the neck. Because I basically can't touch this painting now until all that's dry. Oh yeah, there's one piece I wanted to add down here as well. Basically a fuzz layer, another, another fuzz layer down here. All right, so there you go. That's the end of that lesson. How do you make changes when you're already in the oil stage and you go, oh no, I really need to add something. It's real simple. You act, you behave the way we did in the acrylic stage. It's just going to go real slow because I can't do anything till that's dry. And that, that would be two or three hours from now, but I'm, I'm, I'm tied up at that time. So it'll be, I'll be back tomorrow. All right. So I'm going to end this broadcast here and uh, start another broadcast here shortly as I begin to work on my Krispy Kreme donut painting. All right, and I'll enjoy reading all the rest of your chats um, after I finish the broadcast. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye.